Good morning. Good to see you this morning. John chapter 16. The Gospel of John chapter 16. You know, even for many Christians, if we focus on Jesus, then many think we're excluding the Holy Spirit. And if we're focusing on the Holy Spirit, then we're excluding Jesus. And nothing could be further from the truth. It's never a proposition of either or with the Trinity, who are three distinct persons in one God. It is both and. In other words, as we understand uh, the Holy Spirit, then we actually draw closer to the Lord Jesus. And we're going to see that very clearly here in this passage out of John chapter 16. I want to first direct your attention to verse 1, where Jesus here has been preparing his followers for him going away. And he says to them, I have told you all these things so that you will not fall away. This is not so much speaking about spiritually falling down as much as it is standing away from him. That's what the words in the Greek language literally mean. To stand away from Jesus. In other words, Jesus never leaves us. He, he never distances himself from us. We're always the one that if, if we don't want to be this close to Jesus, that we're the ones walking away from him. He never walks away from us. And Jesus here is saying to his disciples, I'm going to tell you these things because I want you to stay near me. I want you to stay close to me. In fact, even earlier in John 15, in that great passage of the vine and the branches, Jesus says, remain in me, abide in me, stay close to me, do not distance yourself from me. And he's going to tell us here, as well as he told his own disciples, that the way that you and I can do that is through the presence and ministry of his Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus could say to his followers when he was getting ready to go away, you're going to be in me and I'm going to be in you. Well, how is that possible, Jesus? You're going to be at the right hand of God the Father. You're going to ascend back to heaven. How can I be in you and you in me? Through the Holy Spirit. And it will be the ministry and presence of the Holy Spirit who brings us close to Jesus, who helps us stay close to Jesus, to remain, to abide in fellowship with Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. In fact, you'll notice down in John chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus says, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will lead you into truth. He will show us the way into what real reality is, which is what the word truth really means. Well, we know Jesus even said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. So if the Holy Spirit is guiding us into all truth and Jesus is truth, then we know again that we are coming closer to Jesus as we allow the Spirit to guide and lead and show us the way into Jesus. Then he goes on to say this, verse 14. He, the Holy Spirit, will glorify me because he will receive from me what is mine and will tell it to you. So we see the, the, the symbiotic sort of relationship between the Spirit and Jesus. He's going to, he's as close to me as anyone can be. Uh, I'm, he's going to receive from me. Uh, he's going to tell it to you and he will glorify me. What's it mean for the Spirit to glorify Jesus? It means he will enable us to see Jesus Jesus for who he really is, that he really is God, that he is the son of God, that he is the savior of the world, that there is no salvation in any other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved than Jesus Christ, which leads me to this first sort of point, And that is that you and I can't even come into a relationship with Jesus apart from the spirit. And many even Christians sometimes, they're praying for, say, people that are unbelievers or unsaved, and, and they look just at the externals. And, and, and they're going, God, I'm, I'm praying for this person who's not a Christian, and it doesn't seem like you're doing anything. 
It doesn't seem like you're drawing them to yourself or that you're bringing someone or something into their life to, to bring them closer to you so that they're not standing so far away in unbelief. And we've got to remember something that you and I can never see the internal ministry of the Holy Spirit that is happening inside a human being at the heart, soul, spirit level, call it whatever you will. You and I can't see that. And yet every one of us who are here today that are believers in Jesus Christ, there were times in our life way before we became a Christian, way before we actually placed our confidence and faith in Jesus as our Savior, that the Holy Spirit was working internally in our being drawing us to Jesus. And that's exactly what Jesus says. And that's why he wants us to be encouraged, just like he did his disciples. That though you and I cannot see the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we know that he's working. Notice what Jesus says in the middle of verse 7. He says, for if I do not go away, the advocate, another, again, term for the Holy Spirit, our supernatural helper, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, the Holy Spirit, he will prove. The word means to convict and convince. He will prove the world wrong concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. In other words, when the Holy Spirit comes into a person's life, especially those who do not believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit will say, you're wrong about Jesus. Jesus is the Lord. He is the Savior. There is no salvation apart from him. And then he will go on to say to us, you're a sinner in need of a Savior. You stand before God condemned in your sin. And yet God has provided a way of salvation. His name is Jesus. And your righteousness, your human Rightness, your, your good works, can never secure a relationship with God. The only righteousness that God will accept is his own. And that's why you and I must place our faith in the only one that can stand before God in his righteousness acceptable, and that's Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, we stand in judgment because we have rejected God's way of salvation, the one who takes our judgment for us and did so on the cross when he died for our sins. Instead, we tell God, no, God, I'm, I'm fine without your son, Jesus. I'll let the chips fall where they may. And if that means that I have to accept judgment for myself, then I will. And that's what the Holy Spirit does, though. He is continually working internally in anyone who doesn't believe yet in Jesus Christ, saying, no, 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 don't, don't go that route. Come to a place where you are willing to humble yourselves before God, cry out for mercy, put yourself upon the mercy seat of God, Ask Jesus Christ to be your savior because without Jesus, there is no salvation. Without Jesus, your future is only going to hold judgment because you have rejected the only one that can take your place, Jesus Christ, and you, you have turned him away. So Jesus is saying, let's not forget that the Holy Spirit is always doing this, enabling people to see me for who I really am. That I'm not just this good teacher, this prophet that existed a couple thousand years ago that everybody would acknowledge, you know, came to this earth. And, and I believe that there was a man named Jesus of, of Nazareth, but I don't believe he is the Son of God. See, the Holy Spirit will convince and convict. He will convict us that we are wrong about Jesus. We are wrong concerning sin. We are wrong concerning righteousness. We are wrong concerning judgment and that we've got to align our understanding and belief according to what God has said through Jesus and through his word and make ourselves right before God by accepting Jesus Christ as our savior. This is the first thing. This is how then the Holy Spirit can take someone who's so far away from God and bring them close to God so that they're not standing away from Jesus. 
That's always what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to bring us closer and closer to Jesus. We even see this with one of the great disciples of Jesus, Peter. Because even though the Bible is describing Peter physically, it's also sort of an insight into where Peter was spiritually, if you will, at that moment. When right before Peter denied the Lord three times, and Jesus told Peter, because of your pride, you're going to fall away from me. You're going to stand away from me. And the Bible says that at that moment, Peter kept his distance from Jesus. That's what it says in the Gospel of Luke. Peter kept his distance. He was standing way away from Jesus. And then all of a sudden, what happens? He denies that he even knows him. Because at that moment, though he believed in Jesus, he's the one that said, you know, Jesus, you are the son of the living God. That at that moment, he wasn't close to Jesus at all. He was standing away from Jesus and therefore denied Jesus. And that's why Jesus is saying here, I'm telling you these things so that you won't fall away, so that you won't stand away from me, but that you'll get as close to me as possible. And all that happens through the presence and power and ministry of the Holy Spirit. In fact, in this, let me share these three things that really the Lord zeroed in to me to share with you today. One thing is this that through the presence and ministry of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to see things that we normally or without his aid could never see. See, one of the reasons why God wants us to, to not only accept Jesus as our Savior, but then have the presence of the Spirit in our lives is all, at all times is because if you and I don't have the aid and support and help of the Holy Spirit, we are very limited into what we can see, what we can perceive, what kind of insight we can have. That in a sense, as a human being, our, our, our limitation is like seeing the iceberg. That, that all we see is what exists above the waterline, and yet the majority of the iceberg actually exists below the waterline. And so there's great limitation to us. What the Holy Spirit will do is the Holy Spirit, if you will, will allow us many times to see below the waterline of things, to be able to understand, perceive, and have insight into things that we could never have apart from his presence and ministry in our lives. And let me show you this specifically out of this passage. As I said to you, Jesus kept telling his disciples, I'm going away. I need to prepare you. I'm going away. So notice here again, in verse 5, at the very end, they ask him, where are you going? <laughs> and notice what Jesus says in verse 7. It is to your advantage that I am going away. And can I just say it, even though it's not in the Bible, at that moment, all his disciples would say, get out of here. It's to our advantage that you leave? Wait a minute, wait a minute. We have you here with us. We can see you, we can feel you, we can touch you. We can walk with you, we can hear you teach us. We can watch you perform it. What do you mean, Jesus? It is going to be to our advantage that you go away. Because Jesus is saying, well, as long as I'm with you in this human body here, that there can be times where I'm with you and times where I'm not with you. And, and times where I can be connected and times where not. But when my Holy Spirit is placed within each one of you, then we're never apart. Then we're never separated. And that you're going to know actually more about me because the Holy Spirit is constantly going to be in you with this internal witness and he's going to be able to show you because he lives within you things that you cannot see. And right now, you don't see the fact that it's to your advantage that I go back to my Father in heaven. You can't see that. And that's why you're in such a terrible state. That's why your attitude has tanked. That, that's why you're filled with fear and, and anxiety and all these things. Because you can't see something yet, but when the Holy Spirit comes, that will change. In fact, Jesus here says, look at verse 6. He, he acknowledges the fact that right now they are filled with sadness. 
He says, instead, right now, your hearts are filled with sadness because you can't wrap your mind, you can't see that it's actually going to be better for you if I go. That's like many Christians today. And the reason I want to bring that up is because that shows us how important we get connected to the Holy Spirit even as Christians. Because there are some Christians who God does something in their life or doesn't do something in their life or maybe even does something or doesn't do something in somebody else's life and, and, and God is trying to get us to see, but you don't understand. This is for my glory and this is for your benefit. And we go, get out of here, God. How in the world can that be for your glory? And how in the world can that be for my benefit? I, I just don't get it. I don't see it. And that's because at that moment, we're like Peter. We are standing too far away from Jesus and we now have lost our connection to Jesus through the Holy Spirit who lives within us and we won't be able to see it. And we'll be like the disciples that even though we can believe in him and know who he is, we can still be filled with anxiety and, and sadness and all these things because we can't see what only the Holy Spirit can make us see and cause us to see. But Jesus doesn't leave it there. He gives them a promise. Look over in verse 20 of John 16. He says, I tell you the solemn truth, you will weep and wail and the world will rejoice when I'm hanging on that cross and when they lay me in that tomb. But he says, you'll be sad at that point, but notice this, your sadness will turn into joy. See, you don't see this yet. You think all that's happening before you is somehow, you know, a, a, a tragedy, and it's the last act of this terrible tragedy that's playing out in front of your eyes, and all that you see is, I'm, I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna be dying, it looks like evil has won and, and good has lost and all these things. But Jesus says it's because you can't see what God sees. And, and the only thing that's going to help you to see that is the Holy Spirit. And when you begin to open yourselves up to the Holy Spirit, your sadness will turn into joy. And then I love this, verse 26. He says at the very end, and no one will take your joy away from you. Or excuse me, verse 22, at the very end of 1622. No one will take your joy. Not only will your sadness turn to joy, but your joy no one will take. Why? Because the joy that God wants to give us through his Holy Spirit is a joy that is not dependent on circumstances. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So again, why is the Holy Spirit as a person and his ministry and his presence so important? Well, we can't come to Jesus apart from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's the one who God brought into this world to convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. He's the one that enables us to see who Jesus really is, that he's not just a man that he wasn't just a good teacher, that he wasn't just a good example, but he was the son of the living God, the Messiah and the savior of all the world. And apart from the Holy Spirit in our lives, like the disciples, we are left to try to interpret things in our life or other people's lives or even in this world only in a very limited way. Only in what we can see and what we can perceive in, in our humanness. And our humanness is very limited into the insight that we have into things. God is totally unlimited because God sees the end from the beginning. He sees it all laid out there before him from eternity past to eternity future. And so many times even as Christians, if we're not staying close to Jesus, if like Peter, Jesus is over there and we've walked way over here and we are standing way apart from Jesus, when something comes into our life, some circumstance into our life or somebody else's life or into this world, and we look at that from our human perspective, we, will, we can conclude, God, what are you up to? 
Are you crazy? How, how, how can this in any way be part of your plan? And we react the same way that the disciples did when Jesus said to them, it's actually going to be advantageous to you. It's actually going to be beneficial to you. It's actually going to be more profitable to you when I leave you. Jesus, how can that be? When you and I allow the Holy Spirit to minister in us, that he can show us things that we could never see apart from him. That through him we can see God works all things together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. If we don't allow the Holy Spirit to be ruling in our life at that point, we can't see that. But a Christian who allows the Holy Spirit's presence to, to take over, we can begin to see those things that humanly we could never see. But there's something else. The Holy Spirit not only enables us to see things we could never see, he allows us to do things that we could never do. Go back with me to John 15. I'm going to run up to chapter 16. In John 15, verse 26, Jesus says this about the Holy Spirit. When the advocate comes, the Holy Spirit, the supernatural helper, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. He will be a witness, literally, he will give evidence. That's what the word witness or testify means. And then notice what Jesus says in the very next verse, the last verse of chapter 15. And you also will testify. You will become a bold and effective witness for me because you have been with me from the beginning. You've accompanied me, you know me. See, Jesus calls upon those who know him best to witness about him because Jesus doesn't want people that really don't know him to somehow testify about him any more than you and I would like it when someone that doesn't really know us they don't know us. They don't know our heart. They don't know our motivation. They don't know what we're really thinking when they judge us. We don't like that do we? That's unacceptable. If they knew me, if they know what was in my heart, if they knew what was in my mind, if they knew what was motivating me, they wouldn't say those things about me. Well, guess what? The same thing is true with Jesus a hundredfold throughout the world. When people who really don't know Jesus start testifying about it and actually bring discredit to him because they misrepresent who Jesus really is because they don't know him. Jesus wants those who really know him to testify and witness. And not just to testify and witness and give evidence of who he really is, but to do so effectively and boldly. Well, then why does Jesus link the ministry of the Holy Spirit when he says, and when the Holy Spirit comes into the world, he will testify of me? Oh, and you will too. Because Jesus is linking the two, saying that it's only through the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we will become a bold and effective witness for Jesus Christ. That we won't be intimidated. That we won't be, uh, feel inferior. That we, won't, uh, that we will not lack the boldness and the courage to be able to stand up for Jesus and tell the truth about who Jesus is, no matter what we may face. Because if you notice the context of what Jesus has just said, go back up with me a little bit further in John 15 and look at verse 18. Jesus has now said, if the world hates you, be aware it hated me first. And I tell you, if you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world for this reason, the world hates you. And remember what I told you, a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. The reason why Jesus hadn't said anything up to this point before he was going away is up to this point, Jesus was able to sort of be the focus of the animosity and hostility of the world. But Jesus understood. When I go away, guess who's going to be the focus and hostility of the world? Not Jesus. 
because he's not here anymore. The focus of the animosity and hostility towards Jesus will now come upon his followers. And Jesus is saying to his followers, I need you because I'm the only hope for this world. I, I'm the only one that can set men free from their sin. I, I'm the only one that can transform a heart and a life. So I need you to be a light. I need my people to stand up for me and be a bold and effective witness and be willing to testify of me. But I understand and you need to understand it's not going to be in a friendly environment. You, you're going to have to have the courage and boldness to do it in the midst of a world that's going to hate you and persecute you and mock you and scorn you and laugh at you and make fun of you because you are a follower of me. Because if they did it to me, mark it down, they're going to do it to you. And the only way that we as Christians and as churches will be willing to stand up in the midst of that kind of an environment and not be ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation is when the Holy Spirit is empowering us to do so. Let me give you an example from scripture. Keep your finger in John 15 and 16 and go with me to the book of Acts chapter six and chapter seven. I know these passages pretty well because when my wife and I were having children and we were deciding on names for our children, our firstborn, I love this man and his example so much, that's what we named our son. Some of you might know that guy over there. His name is Steve, Stephen. Look at Acts chapter 6. Look at what it says about this man, Stephen, in verse 5. They chose Stephen to be part of the leadership of the early church. And notice how it describes him. He is a man full of faith and of what? a man full of the Holy Spirit. And then beginning in chapter 7, Stephen stands up to all of these religious leaders and all of these people of the world who have such animosity and hostility towards Jesus, and man, he starts to preach. I mean, he just opens up the Old Testament and he starts to preach. And guess what happens? At the very end of his sermon, in verse 51 of chapter 7, notice what Stephen says. You stubborn people, you un with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are always resisting the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's trying to get through to you. The Holy Spirit, like Jesus talked about, he's in you. He's trying to convict you and convince you of who Jesus really is. He's convicting you of sin and of righteousness and judgment. He's trying to get you to line up with the things of God, but you are pushing him down. You are resisting him. Your heart is impenetrable. You are not allowing the Holy Spirit to influence you. And because of that, we know what happened to Stephen, right? Look at verse 54. When they heard these things, they became furious and ground their teeth at him. And notice what the Bible says in verse 55, still about Stephen. Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked intently toward heaven, saw the glory of God, Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. The Holy Spirit was allowing him to see things that he could have never seen apart from the presence of the Spirit in his life. And they covered their ears, shouting out with a loud voice, and rushed at him with one intent. And when they had driven him out of the city, they began to stone him. And the witnesses held their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they continued to stone Stephen while he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he fell to his knees and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not lay this sin against them. And when he said this, he died. Notice something I love in this passage. When we are willing to stand up for Jesus, Jesus stands up for us. I love that picture when it says, he saw Jesus standing up in heaven. And what this shows us is that God will not keep us sometimes from the hostility and, and, and hatred of the world. In fact, that's why the word witness actually is where we get our word martyr from. Many of the people and Christians down through the ages, in fact, even Christians to this day in certain parts of this world are literally dying 
for their faith in Jesus Christ. Dying for it. How can they be such a bold and effective witness? How can they be willing to testify and give evidence to Jesus in spite of the world in which they live through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit? You and I will shrink back. We will be like Peter. And if we are not staying close to Jesus and therefore allowing the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life, we will shrink from any kind of situation like Stephen found himself in. You know, we'll go back to, I just want everybody to like me. I just, I, I, I don't want to, you know, be too much of a Jesus fanatic because people will start talking about me. Yeah. And can I say, when we as Christians have those kind of attitudes and those kinds of thoughts, we're not connected to the Holy Spirit. Because when we are full of the Holy Spirit, we will have a bold and confident and effective witness for Jesus. Not obnoxious, not trying to shove our faith down people's throats, but we certainly will never be ashamed of Jesus or ashamed of the gospel of Jesus if we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because we understand that it is only Jesus and only his gospel that can save humanity. And the one thing humanity needs more than ever is Jesus Christ. And that's why it, it behooves us as the church, as those who truly know Jesus, to stand up for him and to speak about him more than we ever have before. Because if the world ever needed Jesus, if the world ever needed a savior, it's now. By the way, they're, they're not my notes for today, so. <laughs> they're actually notes for many, many months from now. One other thing, go back to John 16. Wow, time gets away from me when I'm talking, doesn't it? I want to look at verse 33 of John 16. Jesus says to his disciples too, I have told you these things so that in me, and that's really important, you may have peace. Notice Jesus doesn't promise his followers peace, but he offers it. Which is, again, is why many Christians don't have joy. It's not because they don't have Jesus in their life. It's not because they don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. But they're not connected to the Holy Spirit. They're not walking in the Spirit. They're not filled with the Spirit. Because it is as we allow the Spirit to take over our lives that we can have joy apart from circumstances and we can have peace in Jesus apart from circumstances. So that's why Jesus doesn't say you will have peace. He said you may have peace. In the world, notice, you will have trouble and suffering, but take courage. Radiate strength and confidence is what the words mean. I have conquered the world. I have overcome. I have prevailed. I am victorious. And if you and I are in Jesus and Jesus has conquered, then you and I can conquer too. So what we are learning here is this. With the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can bring us to Jesus. And more than that, he can enable us to see things we could never see, do things we could never do, like be a bold and effective witness. And he can help us to overcome things we could never overcome without him. That's so important because many even Christians today, they're living defeated lives, not lives of victory. They, they've allowed something to come in and get a hold of them that's got the better of them rather than prevailing over it and overcoming it and conquering it. And Jesus is saying, you realize that as you stay close to me, that in me, that even though in reality you're going to have trouble and suffering, and I love the fact that Jesus is just so straightforward with it. He doesn't say, look, you're never going to have any trouble or suffering if you follow me. He doesn't say that. He says, as long as you exist in the world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have trials. You're going to have tribulations. But through the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, you can overcome that. That your peace and your joy and your attitude is not beholden to your circumstances. You see, people of the world, 
And people who lack faith in Jesus Christ and even Christians who are not staying connected to Jesus through his Holy Spirit, their attitude, their perspective, uh, their happiness, if you will, and all that is always connected to their circumstances. However their circumstances go, that's how they go. Jesus is saying, you realize that with me, with God, and with the Holy Spirit, God in you at all times, that you never have to be beholden to your circumstances. That through the Holy Spirit living in you, you can always rise above your circumstances. You can have peace in the midst of your trouble and suffering. You can have joy in the midst of your trials and tribulation. In fact, what I will give you through my Holy Spirit will actually override the negative things that you will experience in the world. It's not that you won't experience those things, but my joy will be greater than your trial. My peace will be greater than your tribulation. My hope will be greater than your suffering. My love will overcome whatever hatred the world is spitting out at you. You see, there's this tension that you and I live with as Christians. Even as a Christian, as long as I live in this world, like Jesus says, because this is not our home, there's going to be all kinds of things that we deal with. And God says, in my wisdom, I knew that it would be better for you, again, to your advantage, that I not take those things away because you're actually going to get stronger and you're actually going to learn to exhibit more faith in me by learning to work through the trials and tribulations and through the times of suffering and all of that. And one more thing, you're going to learn that it's through those times that you can actually be the greatest witness for me. Because unlike the world and the people of the world and the people who don't know me, whose attitude and perspective and all of that is connected to their circumstances. He says, you can be a people who stand out so distinctively in this world because you can be going through trouble and suffering in your life and yet through the Holy Spirit, you can still exhibit joy and peace. A joy that no man and no circumstance can take from you and a peace in me that in spite of the trouble and suffering you will have, you can always have my peace with you. So that when people look at us, then they can see the difference that Jesus truly makes. Because anybody can have a great attitude when everything's going well. But it's only the Christian who is empowered and dwelt by the Holy Spirit of God that can have a good attitude when things aren't going well. And that's what can draw people to our Savior when they see the reality of the Holy Spirit and Jesus in our lives, as we live our lives, again, being able to see things we could never see, do things we could never do, and overcome things we could never overcome. Would you stand with me and let's pray. God, I ask today that you would take this message and help us to come closer to you today, Jesus. You said at the very beginning of this chapter, chapter 16, I'm telling you these things, my followers, so that you will not fall away, so that you will not stand away from me, but so that you will come closer to me. Because as you come closer to me, then that means also you're coming in closer contact and connection with my Holy Spirit. And you'll be able to see things you could never see, do things you could never do, and overcome things you could never overcome apart from him. So today, may all of us, and may we as a church, not stand further away from you, but may we come closer to you, Jesus, in this moment in our lives. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.